you here for for Ash Wednesday? Oh yeah, it's Ash Wednesday today. Yes, I know. I'm so excited to be ready for Ash Wednesday. We we have to do something that's we have to get the ashes ready. We have to get the ashes ready. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are the ashes made out of? Well, let me show you. So, okay. Are you making the ashes now? Kind of. Well, so here in this can, this is an old coffee can. And Ooh. do you remember Palm Sunday last year? I love Palm Sunday. We start outside and they're singing. Yeah, exactly. And we have the big palms and we wave and we them. wave them. Yeah, so after worship, we gather up the palms mm -hmm. and some of them we take and we burn them. Oh. and Because we, they were bad? No, not because they were bad. Because they're part of the circle of Lent to Lent. It connects with the back end of Lent to the front end of Lent. Okay. So we burn them. So we burn them. And if you see, can you see in there? There's some ashes in there. I can see them in there. there. Can yeah. I see them in there? There's some ashes in there. Yeah. And so we, we put we put them inside this can. Okay. And we light them on fire. Okay. And then they become ashes. Okay. Then we bring them in here and we put a very special lid on. It says, palm burning can, keep. Because does that look like it's something important? No, not really. No, it doesn't, but it is important, it's, and we keep it. So we keep this extra special, and we keep it here in this little room. Do you know what this room is called? Um, the closet? Ooh, closet is a good idea. However, in church, we a lot of times we take what we would consider normal words that we know, and uh -huh. we make them church words. Oh. Yes. So this little room is called the sacristy. The sacristy. The sacristy. Say it again. The sacristy. The sacristy. Yes, so we're in the sacristy. The sacristy. And we keep this special can all year here in the sacristy. <clears throat> and sometimes when you burn palms, mm -hmm. there are big bits of ashes and little bits of ashes. So we actually, we use a strainer to strain out the big bits, and then we get just the really fine little ashes. So now, I have a question for you, Binky. If okay. I used these ashes to make a cross on your forehead, what do you think would happen? Um, it would stay on my head? I don't think it would. It might stay in your fur, but it wouldn't oh. work on Sean's head very well. Because it's all dusty. Can you see how dusty it is? Can you oh, see that is dust dusty. Ooh, ooh. It's like a dragon! <laughs> kind of, it is. It's very dusty in there. So it's very dry, so we have to add something to it. What should we add to it? Water. Oh, that's a good guess. But actually, if you add water, it doesn't work quite right. In fact... Wine. Ooh, wine. That would be interesting, but I don't think that's going to work either. Oh. So we have to add, and actually we've experimented. Do you know that our catechism class yes, last year, we experimented with all kinds of things to make the ashes out of. We tried sunflower oil. Oh, that's nice. And peanut oil. That's allergic. And vegetable oil. That's neutral. And olive oil? That seems appropriately religious. Correct. And so you know what? That's the one we use. Is it extra virgin? This one is just pure. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you could. You could use extra okay. virgin. So here's what we do. So we take a little bit of the fine ashes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from this one, and we put them in. And you can see they're still pretty dusty. Yeah, that's really yeah. dusty. Now we take a little bit of the, at, of the oil. Mm-hmm. And we put some oil in. Now here, this is a really tricky part because getting the consistency mm -hmm. is a bit hard. It's like science. It is kind of like Chemistry. science. It mm -hmm. is a little bit. Yeah. Can you see in there? Yeah. Can you guys see in there? You can see the wet parts and the dry parts. Yeah. And so... They don't look like they want to mix. They don't look like they want to mix. So I'm going to force them to mix with okay. my spoon. And we do this. And guess what? What? Miss Karen in the office, she does this for Pastors Orin and I, and then we work on it all day. All some day? Some of us come in and we adjust the recipe, and we adjust it some more, and we adjust it some more until it's just about right. Not too wet and not too dry. So, like, I don't know, does that look good? Looks a little dry still. It does look a little, it's, it's a little Oreo dusty right still. It does look like Oreo mm -hmm. dust. Yeah, let's fix that. Oops, that was way too much oil. Except I don't want to eat This that. is how this goes. So you make it wetter, mm -hmm. and then you go, oh, it looks like black paint, which is lovely, but not going to work. I don't want to put that on my head. No, so then you have to add more ashes. And we just go back and forth like this, over and over and over, until it is eventually more or less ripe. And believe it or not, that can take all day. So And today's we, Ash Wednesday, right? Yeah, so we got to really keep working on this, okay. so it's ready for church later. 
Because right now it still sort of looks like paint. It does. Really yeah. dirty paint. Really dirty paint, which is not fun. So we'll just keep adding a little more ashes and a little more ashes. Hey, Pastor Nicole. Yes. So when I get my ashes on my head, do I have to leave them on there forever? Like, oh, no. Not ever? forever. So I can take a shower? Yes, you can take a shower. That's a good question. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I was a younger person, mm -hmm. kind of like you as a monkey, mm -hmm. I wondered that the first time I got ashes on my head, I was worried that I had to do something special. Like, maybe I had to put something plastic on my forehead when I went to bed, because what would I do? How would I protect it? Or I also wondered, for people that got ashes in the morning time, should they wear them all day? Like to work? Yeah, exactly. Like to work or school or whatever. And so here's the thing. When we put them on, you should just act totally normal. You do all the normal things that you would usually do. So if you would normally take a shower at night, you should take a shower at night. Okay, take a shower at night. Yes. If you just wash your face, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Or even at night, if you feel like, you know what, it's bedtime and it's time to just wash those off, that's okay. You can wash them off because here's the really cool thing about a cross like that. Do you know the first time you got a cross like that? No, I don't. So, do you? I do, I do. When you were at the font and we did a baptism, mm -hmm. we baptized in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son. Yep, and of the Holy Ghost. Very good. Spirit. And Spirit, ghost. ghost. Same thing. Okay. And then we take a little bit of oil, kind of like the oil that's in with the ashes, and we get a little bit on our finger and we mark you with the seal of the cross with the Holy Spirit. And that cross stays forever. That's a forever cross. Even when you can't see it anymore, it's still there. I had no idea. Yeah, and it means that you're God's child. I Always had, and forever. I had no idea. Yeah, and so that's what we remember during Ash Wednesday. When pastors order right, we get the ashes and we make the sign of the cross on your forehead. It's to remember back to baptism that your whole life, even beyond your whole life, that you are God's, that God holds you in his hands that you are marked with the cross forever and ever and ever. And that's what we remember on Ash Wednesday. That's amazing. Yes. So when we put the cross on you tonight, you can remember it's kind of like God saying, I love you. You're my child. That's really cool. Yeah. Forever and ever. And for you kids out there, it's the same thing. So you can remember back to your baptism or let's be honest, I don't remember my baptism because I was a baby when I was baptized. But here's what's cool, because we have the practice of putting a cross on like that. I get to remember my baptism all the time, even though I was a baby when it happened. And I can feel the way that cross feels, whether it's a cross of oil or a cross of water from the font or with ashes. And it's like a way that I can feel God's touch, which I think is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I kind of think maybe we should say a prayer. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. All right. So let's pray. God, we are thankful for all the ways you tell us that you love us, especially in our baptism, in the sign of the cross that is made on us to say that we are your children. And for all the times after that that cross reminds us that you love us and that we are yours. Tonight at worship, when Pastor Zorn or when I put the sign of the cross on us. Help us to remember that it is a sign of your love that we wear out into the world and that no matter what, whether we wash it in the bathtub or in the shower or with a washcloth, that the cross remains and that your love remains. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And we hope to see you later at Ash Wednesday worship. And thank you too. <laughs>